songwriter circle. The whole circle is about a wonderful story. You know, it's about a story of, of, of well, it is. It's a, a story of, you know, of, of yourself and, and, and your team embracing, you know, great talent. Um, and it gives artists the platform to, to, to tell their stories. And let's be honest, music is basically telling stories. We, as a listener, interpret that. Right. The way we choose to, right. um, and you or I might interpret it completely different. Um, but what what's the most important thing I would think to a, a songwriter would be as long as it connects with somebody. Right. Right. Um, it's always those great songs that you're in the car and you always kind of hum the line, and all of a sudden I could be humming something for years, and Tina will go to me. But Mark, it's not that. It's this. I always thought it was that. that it didn't uh, matter. That's what makes the world go around. Exactly. Right? And, that's and, so true. I mean, it's, yeah, of course you want to get the lyrics right all the time, but the great <laughs> thing is that the song is just so moving. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what's special. And going back to your question in Europe, I think that sometimes um, songs are a little different. It depends on the market. Um, Australia is kind of a bridge gap between Europe and, and America. It, it, if you really look at it, they, they kind of, they, they do. They're an in-between, they're almost a testing ground for, they are truly a, a, a mixture of, you know, America, we think we're this very loose, you know, society. Right. Right. We, we like to pretend that we are, but unfortunately we're a little bit too uptight. Um, <laughs> uh, and in Europe, let's face it, I love you guys, but you guys are, you know, it's a definite, you know, it's a European attitude, yes. um, which is wonderful, very cultural, but different than ours. Australia shares the best of both. It's a potpourri. Sure, and I think it reflects in their music as well. It's true. Um, uh, They're their rebels culture. too. They're exactly. kind of the rebellious. Aren't, isn't Australia made up of a lot of rebellious sure. individuals anyway? Absolutely. <laughs> and if you look at it too, they share. Uh, they have country music down there. They embrace and they're Australian. Really? Sure, they keep Urban is Australian. I didn't Keith know that. He was, right. I thought it was like he's Australian. Yep, Keith, Keith Urban he's is Australian. Australian. Mm -hmm. Nicole. Now yeah. I see. That was the only reason they're together, is because they're <laughs> yeah. Australian. Right? And he did a great job on the live earth thing, I have yeah. to say. What a oh. great cover, The Stones. I mean, I think it was just absolutely... And again, that goes back to the power of a great song. Great song. And what about um, Max Martin and ABBA and that whole... That's an amazing little... Well, kind of place for songs. Yeah, I think that uh, Sweden and Max, Jeez. and you know, I think that again, it, it's just a, a wonderful thing that uh, we live in a very small world today. It's smaller now, wouldn't you say, sure. than it was, you know, I think, 30 years ago? You know, we pop open our, you know, little Max, yes. and now our new iPhones. Some of us, yeah. I still don't have one yet. Oh, come uh, on, next week, next week. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, um, very near the store. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think, you know, all the devices have made our just world a much smaller place yeah, and really I think true. that as wonderful as um, technology has been in a lot of terms for our industry I think it's given artists um, uh, well first with the internet I think it's given people a wonderful tool to find new artistry I, I, mm -hmm. I look I think as a kid I remember we used to as kids we didn't have the internet we didn't have MTV we didn't have cable you had you know growing up in New York uh, or, or you know New York New Jersey um, you know, you basically had what channel two, four, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, and uh, and sixty nine. You know, that was it. One of those. I had in Cleveland. Yeah. yeah, there wasn't many channels no, to choose not. from. And the bands would come maybe once a year. And you would listen to our members as a kid again, growing up with the business. But I watched it every with my parents, especially my dad. I'd watch Soul Train. I would watch I um, uh, American Bandstand. Yeah. You know, these were all the Clark. Yeah, these were all great shows. You know, and I. I remember just, and what was it all about? It was always about, you know, kind of, same thing today, fans kind of scoring what the records were and judging them and then going on. And I remember where they would flip the disc and that would be the one that won the pick for the day. And it, it, it was just kind of wonderful. And I, I think it's, it's, it was a showcase, but on a, on a national scale of, of records. Do you think it's kind of come back to that a little bit with the I, shows and the idol? I, and well, I think everything in our business is very cyclical. I think everything goes around, and I think uh, I think we've been in reality TV, and I think personally, the uh, when we were growing up, we had a lot of great shows like American Bandstand and stuff, and then we had um, oh, Goldie Hawn. What was her great show that I used to love? Uh, laughing, laughing, laughing. Variety shows. I think variety is the next. Let's see if I could put on yeah. be a television hat, which I don't have, but let's just take the plunge. Variety. 
Um, but uh, variety could be the next, you know, who knows. But, yeah. uh, but uh, again, in a way, it is variety's coming back it now. Is. I think about it when you have America's Most Talent and all that stuff, that really is yeah. a variety and show. And musicals, Broadway becoming mm. movies. Again? Yes, That's absolutely. That's very like Singing in the Rain. And yeah. it's uh, all come, it's, it's, it's almost like Tin Pan Alley days mm. a little bit. Oh, I think so. And I think music is just, um, it's just so much in our lives today. Yeah. Um, and I think, and I just think it's wonderful. And I think a lot of that is going back to the technology. It is the computers have done that and iPods have done that. I mean, uh, um, it's great as it was when we were younger and we had a Walkman and we thought we were so cool so when we cool. got our first I was Walkman. So cool. Those but yeah, it's just the, you know, the iPod is just, you know, a tremendous, uh, I think, tool. And I uh, just recently read something that young people today, their average age has dropped down to six point, I, I believe it was 6.6 .6 years old. That th That's how old young children are starting to work with their own electronic devices. Oh, yeah. The average age. Oh, yeah. So it's just beyond, you know. And, uh, and then it's gone on into studios where you can record today. Uh, as simple as buying a Mac, you have a program in it now called GarageBand. So you great songwriters at home, you could sit and you could write your songs and you actually have a chance to make a decent, decent demo for yourself on a Mac with GarageBand right. um, that you could, you know, that you have. That you have, You right. could take it to the next level by buying a Pro Tools system, you know, of course, which is for in a professional studio, it's a lot of money. But you could buy an LE version of it, uh, which is a, a more kind of home version, um, again, that could step up the quality to the next level, that you could do things. Those are all tools that you guys now have mm -hmm. that 10, 20 years ago, it, it wasn't happening. I mean, you had basically your own, four track or eight track you know you're lucky if you got it good if you had it for a while you can mic it great and there is nothing like uh, analog recordings folks right. so, so you know true. those were the great days uh, what we do now in the digital world why it's become so much better is uh, we try and marry the old digital uh, we try I'm sorry we try and mar ma marry the uh, new digital with the old analog with the with the digital you're able to instead of recording down onto tape which does have a great warmth of course now you're going down to hard drive so your cost of making records are kind of dropped down in that sense because tape unfortunately is so expensive and there's a, unfortunately again there's only one company that makes tape in the world wow. today which is really sad what would you say to a, a new artist starting out in this business how would you go about preparing something for somebody like you to listen to one me, mm -hmm. I like demos really naked as we talked about it. I love the song to be shown. Yeah. Now that's when I'm listening to it for a song. So what I tell our people when we're doing demos is song has to really shine through but give a rough idea. Very, you know, rough, sometimes a little bit more, but not over the top production value. Mm -hmm. So you want to give an idea of your yeah. of you want the song to come through, but you also want to give that listener, especially when you're pitching it to somebody, an idea of kind of a production direction that you're going through. And that's what I'm talking yeah. about. We have such an influence and we have such a wonderful gift and it's such a powerful gift yeah. that we could help change the world. Um, in, in not that we could, you know, reinvent things, but how we could do it is that we could give people a sense of escape, a sense of, a sense of, um, Belongingness. Belonging. A, a connection. Connection, right? You're so right. You know, to me, so that is what, you know, we're about. And that's what we want to create here. That's why we thought it was just such a wonderful thing to be a part of what you guys are doing. Thank uh, you. Because it is such a, 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 it truly is one of the wonderful events. It's um, a very, um, I think, uh, very old school about great songs and great artistry. There's not many people that are doing it, and you're doing it, and I know for all the right reasons, because it comes from Tina's heart. Um, and that's why we wanted uh, to really to be a part of it. And um, we're honored, Denise and Joe, and myself and everyone here at 785, uh, both publishing and records and Denise Rich songs, to, 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 we are honored to be a part of oh, this. Thank this you, so Mark. So this has been so great. Wow, we got more oh, than we even true. ever could have asked true. for. I know, it's kind um, of bouncing all no, over the place. It's, right? it's, you know, it, the beauty is you're seeing somebody here who is completely passionate about what they do, which is not typical always when you go to these <laughs> big labels. This is the great thing about an indie label, which is why we're approaching so many. But Mark is really special. and. Thank you so much. This has just you. been, I know people will love listening to your blog and learn so much from it. 
And um, thank you, Nikki, for running yeah, the camera. No Nikki problem. behind the camera's songwriter, too. <laughs> um, this is Tina Schaefer, again, saying thank you to Mark Eichner from 785 Records, Denise and Joe as well, and Maureen over there, too. We will see you on the next vlog.